When you and I were very young, we learned that jobs which seemed impossible to do alone were not really so hard when several of us worked together. As we grew older, we learned more about teamwork on the playgrounds of our schools. We learned that the team is more powerful than any one of its members. That when we pull together for a common goal, we are more effective than if each of us tries it on his own. Working together voluntarily is one of the earmarks of American democracy. Our founding fathers worked together to clear the land and build their homes. Even today, farmers continue to work together in crews to harvest their crops and thresh their grain. People in communities work together cooperatively too. Our public schools are perhaps the most far-reaching cooperative service in America. Today, more than 26 million boys and girls go to school, most of them in well-built, well-staffed schools made possible by public tax support. In this high school classroom, these boys and girls learn about problems in community life. The subject for discussion is the American cooperative in the community and its place in our system of free enterprise. Let's listen in. Suppose we start by naming a few of the community services that we maintain cooperatively. Fire protection. Police protection. Public highways. Our daily mail service. Public playgrounds and swimming pools. Public hospitals and health service. Those are all cooperatives, services to the community, supported by the community. There are many more, but what about another type of cooperative activity, say in the realm of business? How about the Associated Grocers? They have a voluntary cooperative organization. The Clearing House is a cooperative service maintained by banks in the community. The Associated Press is a form of cooperative with facilities for seeing, collecting, reporting the news all over the world, it makes available to its member newspapers a news roundup that no single paper could maintain. There are some 2,000 mutual insurance companies in the United States. Many of the biggest companies are cooperatives providing insurance coverage to their member patrons. What about Blue Cross? It's a voluntary type of group hospitalization a service cooperative used by about one-third of the people in the United States. These and many more business cooperatives are based on the same idea that brings neighboring farmers together at threshing time. Three people who voluntarily join together to do something for themselves that no individual can do alone. That is the principle underlying all true cooperatives, whether they are marketing or purchasing, consumer or producer. How does the cooperative, as a way of doing business, compare with the private corporation? The purpose of the private corporation is to make a profit for the stockholders, and the profits are distributed in proportion to the amount of stock owned. In a cooperative, the purpose is service to the members. Any savings made are returned to the members in proportion to their patronage, not in proportion to the amount of stock owned. In a corporation, there is no limit to profits. In a cooperative, the dividend on stocks are limited. In a corporation, stockholders vote and maintain control in proportion to the amount of stock they own. In a cooperative, there is democratic control by the members. A visit to the annual meeting of any well-run cooperative shows how this democratic control works. We arrive just in time to enjoy lunch, prepared and served by the ladies of the organization. After lunch, members from the various districts go into session to nominate the directors they want to serve them. The directors are then elected in a democratic manner, and the elected directors hire a manager to run the business of the cooperative. The directors know that the success of their co-op depends on two factors, serving members more efficiently than they could serve themselves individually, and serving the public interest by passing on to the public the benefits in lower costs, better products, or better service. Farm cooperatives such as this were authorized under the Capra Volstead law. Is that the law that permits cooperatives to be exempt from income taxes? 
No, the cap of Alstead law has nothing to do with taxation. It permits agricultural group organization. Income tax exemptions for cooperatives are permitted only under certain conditions. These are, substantially all the stock and voting media are to be owned by members. Two, members do over 50% of the business of the co-op. Three, each member has one vote or dividends on capital invested in the co-op cannot exceed 8%. Four, any savings in the business operations of the co-op are returned to the members in proportion to their use of its services or patronage. With these conditions, a cooperative may be exempt from income tax, but the cash refunds to the members are taxable as members' income. However, many of the co-ops have waived this tax exemption. Cooperatives vary widely in the type of services performed for their members, but they all fall into three general types. First and most important from the standpoint of number of members and volume is the farmer's marketing cooperative. The individual farmer producing food on his family-owned farm, like any small businessman, usually operates his business on a small scale. Because he is a small operator, he is at a disadvantage when he goes to town to sell the produce from his farm to the large and complicated markets. As early as 1820, we read of groups of farmers setting up marketing co-ops to gain for themselves advantages of marketing, which no one farmer could obtain as an individual. Today, this bargaining type of marketing co-op is still important. Even though it usually has no factory or warehouse, it performs a service by bargaining with the strength of all its members through its elected representatives, instead of each member trying to bargain alone. Another type of marketing co-op, besides actually bargaining for the sale of produce, performs additional services for its members. It collects the produce from the individual farmer, brings it to the cooperative plant, where the member is assured of accurate grades and weights. Built with the farmer's own money, the plant is equipped to process the farmer's milk and distribute it daily as fluid milk. If the market does not need all the milk as fresh milk, the plant is equipped to manufacture evaporated or condensed milk, butter, cheese, or dried milk to meet the needs of the consumer, which is, of course, the farmer's market. A good progressive cooperative offers an incentive to members for improving quality and developing new products. It arranges educational programs by specialists from the extension departments of state university. Here's the specialist in action teaching these future farmers how to select and grow better dairy cattle. Better breeding methods also increase milk production. Dairy farmers in one cooperative have set up this artificial insemination farm, which makes available to the members some of the highest producing bloodlines in America. These sires, like royalty to the dairy breeder, would be too expensive for most individual farmers to own. But through their cooperative, they are able to maintain this breeding service, increasing production for themselves and promoting efficiency in the dairy industry. Farmer cooperatives cover many other services and products too. By joining together voluntarily, farmers built this modern poultry plant. This plant brings to the member farmer the advantages of volume processing, saving for him a better share of the consumer dollar without costing the consumer any more. Thus, the well-managed cooperative works in both the members and the public interest, providing a stable year-round market. The same is true of eggs, gathered at the height of the laying season, now on their way to processing by freezing, canning, or drying in this cooperative plant. Dependable year-round supply makes it a good deal for the consumer as well as the co-op members. Another type of cooperative serves its members by maintaining marketing facilities in a terminal market. Here, producers sell their livestock through their own commission company. The members receive the best price obtainable on the market for the day, and at the end of the year, any savings made by cooperative selling is returned to each member as a patronage refund. That, you remember, is one of the chief differences between a corporation and a cooperative. Members of a cooperative share in the savings in proportion to their patronage, not in proportion to the amount of stock owned. In addition to the farm marketing cooperatives, 
There are purchasing co-ops where consumers voluntarily join together to get the goods and services they want. Then there is the service type of cooperative, such as the mutual insurance companies, the Blue Cross, credit unions, and others that we discussed previously. What is the future of the farm marketing cooperative? It is a well-established American way of doing business, and the trend is increasing. It covers fruits, nuts, fresh vegetables, wool, milk, cheese, other dairy products, cotton, tobacco, oil, gas, poultry, and many other farm products. Today, about one-third of all American farmers sell their produce through marketing co-ops, and it extends from border to border. The farm cooperative brings to the individual farmer a better standard of living for his family. When the farm family is able to buy its share of America's abundance, the city family knows prosperity too. It is through a better understanding of this interdependence that we can build a better, a stronger, and more abundant America of the future.